Welcome to my session. Uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, an easy to use RPC framework. I will focus on easy to use. And of course, I will, sh I will show you the power of modern C++. And this is the outline of my presentation. At first, I will introduce some basic concepts. Secondly, I will introduce what is REST RPC. Then I will discuss the ease of use challenges and the key technologies. I think most people have heard of RPC, right? Yes. RPC means core functions on remote, on remote computer, just like local function call. Local function means it's very easy to use. And the local function call hides the complexity of, of the network and the framework. So RPC can help us improve the efficiency of uh, developing a network application. Yeah, this is, the, uh, this is a typical process of RPC. The client call a local function. The kernel will transform the local function into binary data. The server will, will parse the data and uh, route, to the, uh, route to a real function and return back the result. Yes, it's, it's very clear, right? Next, I will introduce a concrete uh, RPC framework, REST RPC. It is, it is uh, focused on ease to use, yes, and it is my, my goal. Let's go through a quick example of REST RPC. Yeah, this is the server code. The first, define the business logic, then register the business logic, and you have finished the work. You have provided provide a RPC service. Yeah, it's very simple and short, right? Oh, and furthermore, REST RPC is also very flexible. You can, you can choose the serialization policy. REST RPC can support different kinds of serialization. For example, the JSON, the XML, or, or, or customer serialization. Yes, the, the code is on, my, uh, is on the GitHub. And uh, the client code is also fairly simple. After we register the business logic, then you can call the service, just call, call the local function. Yes, I, I think you can finish a network application in five minutes. And this is my goal. I want the user just to focus on business logic. They didn't care about the details of the network and the, the framework and no extra learning cost. I know some RPC framework uh, based on protocol buff. They lead, per, uh, per lead define a protocol fire. So these are, are the advantages of uh, REST RPC. But indeed, it, it is hard to develop a very easy to use RPC framework because you have to face some challenges. These are the challenges. The first challenge is how to register different kinds of function in one container. The second challenge is how to route to the correct handler. The last one is how to simplify the RPC call. Next, I will discuss the challenges and the 
key technologies. Oh, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I want to put different kinds of animals in one cage and make them live together happily. Is, is it possible? <laughs> yeah, just like this. Here, I put different kinds of function in one container. But you know, C++ has no such container, right? So how to do that? Does anyone have some ideas of, about the problem? Type yes, type eraser, yes. Uh, how to type erase? Can you give some uh, uh, um, idea? Any, right? Any or mm -hmm. Fair way, like, like uh, a yeah. or a short parent, I think it was in, uh, some years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so maybe someone think uh, the any or the parent can solve the problem, right? Let's look at the the parent. Oh, yeah. Uh, the ferrant is, yeah, the standard ferrant is from C++ 17, and you, 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 you can also use boost ferrant. Yes, ferrant uh, can hold different kinds of types, and you can put the ferrant in your container. Yes, it, it is possible, but the number, uh, but the the ferrant can't add new type when they define, right? So this this <laughs> this way is, is not a, is, is not right. Oh, how about any? Yes, any can hold any type, no limit, right? But the answer is also wrong. Why? Because you can't do any cast. If you put uh, an object to any and put them into a container, the, ty the type information were lost. What is the type information? Yes, the return type of function, the argument type, and the reference, error and the CV qualifiers. Yes, so, so uh, if the type information lost, you can't get it back. Yes, you need any cast to get the original type, right? So, uh, ferrant and any can't solve the problem. How? How to do a special type erase? Modern C++ can solve the problem, and this is my way. This is a very simple template class and has a template parameter and a, sta a static uh, member function. It's very simple, right? But this is the key point. We need a template class. Just like, like the page shows, the class help us hold the type information, right? And the, and the argument is a generic function. So it can be any callable. It can be void dummy and the integer add or dub function, right? But you, you need type erase because they are different, right? And we use the standard bind to do the type erase. Yes. Here I hide the real fu real function into a standard function, and then you can put the stand standard function into a container. So you can you can. Uh, 
yes, this is a uh, implement implementation code. Yes, it's also very simple. Yeah. Here, I need the I need a class to hold the type information. And and now we can register any callable. And we have solved the first challenge, but the next challenge is coming. Yes, you have put different kind of function in a container, but they look the same like this. How to point or find the right function? You need a key, and the key is made of binary data because the input input condition for the server is binary data, right? And and this is my way to root the right handler. At first, when the client calls the RPC service, I I put the real real arguments into a tuple and serialize, serialize the tuple into binary data. The server can deserialize the binary data uh, into a tuple. Then you can use the standard apply and you can call the real function here is the root. Yes, this is the, oh, okay. So if I understand correctly, if you go back to the previous slide, hmm? um, you are deserializing the tuple with the arguments before you know which function to call? Uh, yes, uh, sorry, uh, can you repeat it? Uh, so if I understand you correctly, when you uh, receive the binary data, mm -hmm. you can deserialize it to the service name and the tuple of arguments before you know which function to call. Oh yes, it, your 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 problem is that how how to how to find the uh, function. Yes, uh, here is of course in contain the service name. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we this is the the key. Okay. Uh, so is the key just the service name, or is it also a key from the arguments? Like, the key. Somehow? Oh yes, the key is is the service name. Arguments is is, is the is is the rest. Yes, here is the, the service name. The arguments is, is rest. Hmm. So uh, when you're looking at which handler, is it like the, uh, the join key of the name and the arguments? Uh, yes, the yes. Well, you 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 can get a standard function function by the key, but you lead root to the real function, right? Because the real function is hiding in the standard function. Yeah, okay, let's move on. Here, I use a serialization library to deserialize the binary data into a tuple. Yes. Then we can use standard apply. And the standard apply is C17 feature. It can call function with a tuple, <coughs> right? Uh, I I want to talk about the this the serialization library. It is uh, Iguana. It is on on my GitHub. It is a serialization engine. Can serialization an object to any format, so you can use it to transform the data to JSON or XML or message pack, even a customer format. Okay, let's go back to the standard function. Uh, because it is a C++ 17 feature, how to use it in C++ 14? Uh, you can implement a standard apply with C++ 14's feature. This is the implementation. You can use index sequence and uh, Ferradic template, yes, it, it, it's very easy, right? 
next I will talk about I will talk about another situation. Sometimes the input the input or uh, the input data the, the input data is not uh, is not a tuple. Maybe it's a raw string. It is very normal for HTTP server. Mm, like like this. This is the URL from the client, and you need you need call root to the right handler, and return back the result. This is the this is the problem. How to make a string to a function call? It's interesting, right? And does anyone have some ideas of, of the problem? A string to a function call. Yes? A map? Map? You, you want to map from a yes, uh, this, this is the URL. The URL contains the service name, and the, the rest uh, arguments is the uh, the rest string is the arguments, and uh, if you send send this string to the server, the server will root to the hello. Yes, this this is the key, and uh, this is a real arguments, and you can uh, do a real function call. How to do that? Type erase to a function container. Uh, a, a map from, from a string to your special type erase function container that you showed. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm. feed in the arguments. Yes, you, indeed, you, you need to uh, solve some problems. At first, you need to pa uh, pass the string to the real argument, right? And then you can put the real argument in your tuple. At last, you can also use standard apply. And this is my idea. <laughs> yes, it's magic. <laughs> yes. At first, I split the string into a string vector. And then transform a string to a real argument how to transform because you you have saved the type information right so you can utilize function trace to trace the real argument type then you can save it into a tuple okay let's look at the code uh, this is the function trace. Uh, it's, it's very uh, simple. It's, it helps us to trace the return type, the arguments type, or the numbers of arguments. Let's move on. Here we also use type erase, like before, but it, there is a neat difference. I use a tuple as a, as a argument is different from before. Yes. Because I need a tuple hold all the arguments. This is a core code. And you need a recursive recursive uh, the the arguments. Can't you do this with a full expression in C plus plus seventeen? You 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 can't re you can't you can't do that in C plus plus seventeen. Oh, sorry. Well, in fourteen, I understand you can't do it. In seventeen, you should be able to uh, essentially use your parameter pack of your function, assuming you still have it, 
to unpack each argument in parallel. Uh, but uh, but the, the but the string arguments you you will uh, you you will put it into a vector, so mm -hmm. you you need to transform one by one, right? One by one, and I, I, and I want to do the job at the compile time, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, pay attention to the red color code. Here I use function trace, get the nth arg argument type. Yes, right. It is it, easy. Then I can transform the string to the real argument, right? Then I can put it into top. Here I use tuple cat. And and the code is in a recursive. So every every time you can transform one argument and put it into a tuple. When the recursive was terminated, you can get all the real arguments in in a tuple, then you can use standard apply. Yes, is that clear? Yes. Next, I will I will talk about uh, how to simplify the RPC core. You know, many RPC frameworks um, they provide many RPC services, and they, they and then they need the client uh, define a special a special interface correspond to the RPC service. And I want to cut the complexity. I want to use use a generic interface. You can use a generic generic interface to call all RPC service. Okay, look at the call. RPC call. Yes, it, it is the user interface. You can use it to call any RPC services. And I can check the error at compile time. If the in, if the argument is not right and the transfer and the transfer to the server, the server will find the error at last. But it is too late. I want to find the error at compile time. Okay, let's look at the core code. Here I use the ferratic template. Yes, I want to unify the user interface. I, I, I really like the, the feature. And I and I want to check the 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 arguments at compile time. So here I use um, a, a trait, it's, it's, a, it's argument match. Yes, next I will talk about matching. Yes, I want to check the function and the arguments are match or not. Attention to the red color code. Here I use deck type and deck value. It is a a invalid operand. Yes, not really call, not really call the function. Just check can call or not. And if the if the function cannot call the arguments and the Template uh, substation will be failed, and and the uh, the first uh, function will, will yeah will be selected, and the return type is false type, right? It, it's also very simple. Next, I will talk about how to simplify standard bind. Yes, look at the code. Standard bind need a uh, Need uh, field placeholders, right? But I, but the Tmax bind needn't placeholders. Yes, 
And how to do that? It is uh, more shorter. This is the implementation. If, if the user pass any argument, the first uh, function will, will be matched. And I will call the standard bind. If you pass, pa pass the uh, non-argument, the second function will be selected. Here I use generic, num generic lambda and uh, perfect forward uh, capture. Here, here is the perfect, perfect forward capture. If the function was left right value, and it will be captured by left value. If the function, if the, uh, sorry, if the function was a right value, and it is, it will be moved. Yes. Yeah. Now we we have know how rest service works, and uh, I think you you want to know how can we do with rest service C. Yes, we can use it to use it to, to develop uh, distribute systems. For example, the high available system, uh, service discovery system, or distribute storage or compute. Of course, you can use it to develop inter-process communication. At the end of my speech, I will tell you something more. Yes, it's, it's some points about uh, RPC. The first point, RPC is a special pub sub model. Because the publisher and the subscriber are the same one. So you can think it as a special pub sub. And sub pub sub model is a special RPC. Because the requester and the responser are not the same one. For normal RPC, they are the same one. Yes. So the pub sub model and RPC has the same uh, have the common essence. And the REST RPC support RPC model and the pub sub model. Yeah. You can you can use it together. This is the RPC core and this is the pub sub model. Yes, so it's very confident. And uh, welcome to use REST RPC and welcome to contact me. Yeah, questions? Okay. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you were showing how you can basically at compile time uh, make sure that the client's not calling anything that's not in the protocol. Um, have you done any work around like synchronizing this also with the server's implementation so that maybe if uh, you increment the server's version Sorry. Um, so is it API versioning? Right? Essentially. Yeah. So yeah. how do you handle API versioning on the client and the server? Uh, like if the client has updated to a new oh, protocol. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, REST RPC is, is like REST API. So because the, the service name is a string, right? So you can, you can add the version. Okay. Yeah. It, 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 is the, it is same with REST API. Sure. So you can use, User. yes, yes. Okay. What are you using for the underlying network connections? Is it Boost or Qt or? Uh, yes, oh, uh, your, your question is uh, what, what I used in, uh, what, what, uh, what network I used, right? Yes, I use Boost SL, yes. And both is it will be the standard. Yes.
Okay, thank you.